From the time I was three years old, my two closest friends were African-American twins. We're still really close. I adored them. They were smart and funny and cool. They knew things about stuff that I had no idea about. And I was so grateful they were my friends. We were adventurous together. We had fun together. We screwed up together and had to take tutoring for two years to learn long division together. They were my best friends. And when their mom married a white man, when we were in fifth grade, I heard everybody say what a big deal it was. And I remember thinking to myself, why? I also remember watching the civil rights movement on TV and seeing people who looked like my two best friends being hosed and violently arrested and killed because of the color of their skin and I did not understand why. When I was in college, my freshman year, there was a cross burning and everybody was appalled thinking, how did this safe little elite college have such a racist, violent act perpetrated? It turned out it was one of the African-American students who was trying to raise an awareness of how inherently racist our college was. There were 2,000 students in our college and 90 of them were African-American. So school was canceled and there were seminars for an entire day that were led by faculty members and African-American students and the rest of us attending. They were breakout groups. And I remember walking into that group my freshman year of college thinking, well, this will be good because I know I'm not racist, but maybe I can help other people who think that they are. And I walked out three hours later, understanding that I was racist. I understood that just by accepting that white societal values were the norm made me racist. By being privileged as a white person and accepting that made me racist. I understood what it took for the African-American students to be able to integrate themselves into norms that were not their own, to hide parts of their culture in themselves in order to be white enough to get into these elite schools, and I hadn't seen that before. I ended up majoring partly in art history, and the focus of my major was African art. I chose that because I grew up in a home of African art and I loved it. And I was the only white person in that class. And the incredibly uncomfortable part for me in that class was two years earlier, I wouldn't have been uncomfortable because I wouldn't have known that I was racist. But for years after that, my racism made me look through uncomfortable eyes and I hated it because frankly, I preferred being colorblind. It felt, I thought, more loving to be colorblind. And so I come to a time 50 something years later where once again, I'm being asked to recognize that a complacent behavior on my part is not enough. Every single day, I pray for my African-American friends and their families, and in particular, their sons. Every day I pray for the African-American community that surrounds me or that I encounter in my travels. And I pray for their families and I pray for their children. Every day I pray for the African-American community in our country and for an end to the violence called, caused by racism and for all of us to wake up to white privilege and to make the changes that we need to make as white people. But today I realize that praying right now is not enough.
because sometimes we have to speak the truth and that truth is always that we are all one in love but we have to recognize that that is not how the world sees it and so to speak as we instead of me is to acknowledge the inherent racist privilege on which this country has been founded and has been operating because if we do not speak silence turns into violence if we do not speak silence means we are accepting the racism that is endemic in this country and not doing anything about it if we do not speak silence means that we are denying what is happening to people we love and people who should not be being treated as any different. Black lives matter. Black lives matter. Death is not acceptable on the basis of race or anything else. And so to live love, we have to shift our point of view out of me, especially if that me is based on the belief of white privilege. To live love is to understand that sometimes we have to speak we. We have to say what is going on and speak the truth in order to be able to live love. So today, my heart-centered practice is to no longer be silent. Black lives matter. This speech of speaking we means that we no longer accept that black lives are in any way less than any other life. So today, my heart-centered practice of living love is to not be silent. Black lives matter. <laughs>